Want to hear a joke about paper? Never mind, it's terrible. Today, I'm going to recap a 2010 action sci-fi film called Repo Men. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. In 2025, a corporation called The Union has perfected the creation of artificial organs, which have replaced organ transplants. A potential customer can apply for an organ, which is sold on credit at high interest. If a customer is unable to maintain payments after three months, a repo man is sent after the customer to reclaim union property. The process of the repossession is bloody and brutal and often results in the death of the customer. Remy is one of the union's top repo men who partners with his childhood friend Jake to collect on past due accounts. Remy is highly regarded within the union as their top reformer, though his occupation causes problems with his wife, who sees it as unsavory. After she leaves Remy when Jake commits a repossession in front of their home, Remy decides to transfer to a sales job, much to Jake's chagrin. As his final repossession job, Remy is sent to the residence of a music producer, whose work he happens to admire. After allowing the man enough time to complete a song, Remy prepares to repossess his heart. When he attempts to use a heart defibrillator to stop the unit, the defibrillator malfunctions, sending a large electrical shock through his body and knocking him into a coma. When Remy awakens from his coma, he is informed by Jake and Frank, his co-workers, that the shock severely damaged his heart. He can be fitted with an artificial heart or die. When Remy attempts to flee the hospital, he quickly becomes winded and weak and is unable to escape. He reluctantly agrees to the procedure. Remy goes back to work, but is unable to perform his job because he is just like the people he is repossessing from. He attempts to transition into sales, but quickly finds himself behind in payments. Jake takes Remy to the outskirts of the city to a nest, which is a collection of people who have passed due accounts with the union, but are fleeing to avoid being repossessed. Remy is again unable to perform a repossession, after which he is abandoned by Jake until he can perform his job. Remy is attacked by a pair of men, from whom he was expected to repossess artifacts and knocked out. Remy, upon awakening, encounters Beth, whom he had met earlier in a bar where she was singing. He discovers that she has multiple body parts on which she is past due, and is currently suffering from a drug addiction. Remy takes her to a motel room, where he stays with her as she goes through withdrawal. After Jake interrupts his attempt to falsify Artiford returns on both of them, back at the union's headquarters, Remy leaves unassailed by Jake, returns to Beth, and the two leave to live in the outskirts. The pair lied, for a time, in relative harmony. Remy uses an old typewriter that Beth has found to type up a narrative of his life and subsequent conversion. As he finishes, a repo man arrives to repossess his heart, but as he approaches Remy, he falls through a hole Remy is covered in the damaged floor, crashing to the floor below, unconscious. Then Beth, who was hiding behind the door, also falls when the floor collapses under her, re-injuring her leg. From above, Remy sees the repo man coming too, readying to tranquilize or tase Beth. Remy drops the heavy typewriter onto him through the floor, crushing his head to save himself and Beth. Using the repo man's vehicle, Remy sneaks back into his former workplace to obtain a pair of devices that fool organ scanners used by repo men. He attempts to force Frank to clear his account, only to discover that due to his previous aborted attempt, all accounts can now only be cleared back at the union's central office. Remy and Beth attempt to flee the country at the airport, but are taken by security when it is discovered that Beth's prosthetic knee was damaged in their earlier encounter with the repo man. Once inside, they are forced to fight against airport security and another pair of repo men. They are able to kill or incapacitate all of them, and while escaping come face to face through impenetrable safety glass, with Jake, who has now been assigned Remy's account. The pair head to a black market doctor, where Beth's knee is replaced. After the procedure, the two are stopped by Jake, who has tracked the pair. A bitter fight ensues, during which Jake reveals that it was he who rigged the defibrillator unit to malfunction, necessitating Remy's heart replacement. He did this intending to ensure that Remy would have to keep his organ repossession job, so they could get promoted together. The two fight, but Jake gains the upper hand and knocks Remy unconscious by hitting him in the head with a heavy steel chain and hook. Remy is awakened by Beth, and as they escape a raid by the Union's repo men, they are pulled into a safe house by an underground network of Artiforg refugees. The two survive the night, but Remy is overcome with remorse, after finding the corpses of the victims of the Union raid. 
He resolves to destroy the corporation and clear the accounts of Beth and himself. After passing his story to his son during a brief meeting on a train, the pair travel to the union's headquarters, hoping to remove themselves from the system. Remy and Beth are pursued throughout the building, and after an intense battle against Remy's former colleagues, arrive at the Pink Door, the main database for the Union. Scanning Beth's prosthetic eye, they are able to seal themselves inside, just as Jake and Frank arrive. Once inside, they discover that the server does not have any interface, except for a scanner. Remy realizes that the only way to remove themselves from the system is to repo their artifacts. Remy and Beth cut themselves open, in order to use the scanner internally, clearing their accounts. Jake and Frank are able to enter through the use of an artificial organ, removed from one of the guards killed by Remy, and see Remy trying desperately to resuscitate Beth, who has stopped breathing during the process. Jake asks Remy if she was worth all the hardship and pain that he has put himself through, which he confirms. Frank pulls a gun to kill Remy, but Jake turns on his employer, stabbing him with a knife. Jake then assists Remy in reviving Beth, after which he deposits two explosives inside the organ return unit. The explosion destroys the Union's mainframe, wiping all the client account records out of the system. Later, Remy is on a tropical beach, enjoying his freedom with Beth and Jake. His text from earlier in the film has been published into a book, The Repossession Mambo. Remy turns to look at Jake, but instead the background flickers and voices are heard. It is revealed that Remy, in fact, sustained brain injury when Jake hit him with the metal look earlier in the film. Jake, out of guilt and remorse, has paid off Remy's account and has had him placed on a neural network machine, allowing him to live the rest of his life in a dream. Beth is still alive but unconscious, and when questioned as to what to do with her, Jake replies he'll take care of her. This renders the second half of the film as simply a fantasy of Remy's. Jake finds Remy's manuscript, which he greets with a bitter chuckle, as his former partner is willed away presumably to spend the rest of his days in his fantasy world. The film ends with Frank delivering his usual sales pitch, in a commercial, then back to Remy's beach fantasy, where Jake is handing him a tropical drink. Remy leans back, looks down at Beth walking by the water, sips, smiles, and laughs. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the full movie, thank you very much for watching.